everybody, Shopper here, back from another video, and today I will be showing you how to make a zombie in Roblox. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get our zombie. So we're going to go to plugins. We're going to go to build rig. I'm going to go to R6 or R15. I'm going to do this one because it's more simple. Then block rig. Or anything else. None of this really matters. You can just pick anything. I'm going to add some colors. So I can just open this in workspace. And explore. That. That. Right click it. Enter object. Body colors. Then it should already have that. Now you can click it. Name it zombie and properties. Now we're going to start scripting. But we need the script first. So you have to right click it. Insert object, and then go to script. And then now it should put you in the script area. If you're not there, you can just double click this and it'll put you there. Now let's actually start scripting. So first we're going to set some variables. So we can, we can delete this. You can just hold backspace. Then put local zombie equals script.parent. So it's setting the variable for the zombie. Script.parent is from the script and then to the zombie. And then we're gonna get the root part. So local root is zombie. Wait for child humanoid root part. The reason we're doing this is so if it's not loaded in yet, it'll wait for it to load in. And this is just the zombie. So it goes from here to here. Now we're going to get the humanoid, which is this. So local humanoid, you go zombie, wait for child, humanoid. So it goes from the zombie to the humanoid, kind of like this one. So now we can write a function to find the nearest player, because you want to target the nearest player, not just a random one. So we're also going to need another service for this. So players equals game. Get service players. I'm using this, because this is more supported than doing this. So you want to do this instead of that. So now, local function nearest player. Then go to here and press enter. If that doesn't work, you can just put the end there manually. Now, I'm going to set some variables here. So temp equals nil. That's just going to be where the root part is of the player. And local distance equals how, how like, how far you want it to be able to see players. Each one of these is a stud. So if we wanted to see one, one stud, it would just be one of this. Now I'm going to put like a thousand. Now, I'm going to loop through all the players and find the nearest one. So, for index player, you can do whatever you want here. We don't use that. In pairs, players, get players. Do. Now, let me check if there is a player, because sometimes Roblox glitches sometimes and it just returns nothing instead of the player. And then, local character, there you go, player.character. And then if character, then enter. We're we doing this to check if the player has a character or if they're like loading in or something. Now we're going to check if it's alive or not because we don't want the zombie targeting a humanoid who's already gotten got. So character, find first child, which is a humanoid. Just like that. We're doing this instead of that. Because we're checking if the humanoid is there. We don't know if it's going to be there already. So if h, which is the humanoid, and h.health is greater than zero, 
Now we're gonna check for the root part. So I'll go R equals character, find first child, humanized root part. All characters have this no matter what type they are. If they don't have it, then it's glitched. So if R, then we're gonna check the distance. So I'll go dist, we're gonna do this instead of distance because they have to be separate variables, equals r.position minus root.position. If dist is less than distance, then that means it's closer than the range or the other player. We're gonna change distance to dist. So now we can check if it's the closest one. Now we're gonna set the variable for the root part. So temp equals r, so we know it's that one. Then all of this section is done. So now we can do here return temp. So it'll return the nearest player using all this. Now we're gonna set a loop. So while true do. If you don't want this, we're gonna need a wait function. So we're just gonna do game get service run service dot heartbeat wait. And this will just wait a little bit. If it doesn't wait at all, it'll like crash. So we don't want that. Now we're gonna check if there's a nearby player. So local R equals nearest player. If there is a near player, and if there's none at all, then we'll just wait in the loop. Now we're gonna make the zombie walk towards it. So humanoid move to R dot position. So then it'll move to the root part position. Now a zombie doesn't really do damage or anything because we haven't wrote code for that yet. So we're gonna write something for that. So humanoid dot touched connect function hit. You can put this anywhere you want as long as it isn't in front of this, because then it won't get to that code. Because it'll just stay in this loop and it won't ever go over here. And then now you can see if it hit a humanoid, so hit dot parent find first child, which is a humanoid. We've already did most of this here, so we're just gonna copy most of that. I'm gonna do damage like that if we touched a humanoid. And then I'm pretty sure this is all the code we need. So we can press play and let's see if it works. So we got an error. I forgot to put that there. Make this mistake a lot. Yeah. Now it should be working, unless there's another one. Oh, I, for I forgot one more thing. Sometimes with the rig builders and stuff, it gets anchored. So you want to go to the zombie, the humanoid root part, and unanchor it manually. Make sure no other parts are anchored. If they're anchored, then just unanchor them. Make sure there's no other problems, like the walk speed being zero. Put that on 16 or whatever, how fast you want it to walk. And then we can press play. And then boom. Now we have a zombie that attacks the player. And attacks the nearest one. Make sure to slap that like button and push that subscribe button. Peace.